welcome to another episode of HISD at Home. My name is Miss McCullough and I will be your fourth grade math instructor for today's video. Fourth graders, I'm so excited to have you joining me today for today's lesson. We will be discussing benchmark fractions and how we can relate our knowledge of benchmark fractions when it comes to estimating or finding a reasonable amount of addition and subtraction of fractions. I'll explain that a little bit more in detail in our video. Fourth graders, you will need a few items for today's lesson. You will need a pencil or a writing utensil, your math notebook or a sheet of paper, and last but most important, you will need a space where you can focus and learn and listen with me today. So if that means that you need to go somewhere in your house or if you need to let others around you know that you're ready to start your class, you can go ahead and do so. I'm going to give you guys around a minute to go ahead and prepare your items for today's lesson. All right, fourth grade, I hope that all of you are ready to learn with me. I'm gonna go ahead and now read the objective. Remember that our objective is just a statement that tells us the knowledge, the skills, basically the things that we're going to learn and acquire in today's lesson, okay? So let's get right to it. So our objective for today states, today we will evaluate the reasonableness of sums and differences of fractions using benchmark fractions, such as zero, one fourth, one half, three fourths, and one. All right, fourth graders, so now that we read the objective, I want us to get right into the math. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of some fraction models, and then from there, we'll go ahead and solve a few problems. If you guys are ready, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Awesome job, fourth grade. All right, let's stay focused. I'm about to go and transition to show us a few fraction models. All right, boys and girls, so I just wanted to go over this model that I have here. This is a fraction bar, okay? It's called a fraction bar because, well, it looks just like what it's called, right? It's just a bunch of bars and fractions are in these bars right here. So you can see that this red is one whole. Now, these orange bars represent a half. You will notice, guys, that I cut out one bar from each piece so that you guys can visualize how much each piece kind of looks like or represents. So you guys see here, this is a half. So if I add another half, it makes a whole. Remember that, two halves make a whole. You guys will notice on this bar here that I have thirds. Okay, so three thirds, if we line them up appropriately, make one whole, right? You guys see that? All right, next I have fourths. How many fourths make a whole, fourth grade? Very good, yes, four fourths make a whole, right? So if I line this one up here, you see it's a whole, okay? So four fourths make one whole. You guys see that? It's almost as if I were to cut a candy bar or a pizza or something, right? Each one of these bars is cut into equal slices. And if I put the denominator and the numerator, if those two numbers match or are the same, then it's one whole. For example, here we have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth makes four fourths. So four fourths is one whole. Awesome job. This one here, the screen one, is fifths. How many fifths do you guys think make a whole? 
Yeah, awesome work, fourth grade. So if I take five fifths, just like this, line them all up, you guys see that they will evenly line up with the whole. So five fifths make one whole. Very good. Next, look at this blue one. I know it's a little hard to see, but this blue one is a sixth, okay? One sixth. So you guys see here, of course, yes, six six make one whole. You guys see that? One, two, three, four, five, six make one whole. Now I want us to look here. How many six do you guys think make a half? Hmm, how many six do you guys think make a half? Well, let's look at our line here. This is a half, right? So let's keep this line. Let's keep it going, keep it going. Ooh, it matches right here. So let's count. One, two, three. You guys see how we did that? We just took the line of the half. We followed it down with our finger and we noticed that one, two, three, six make a half. I like this model, guys, because you can essentially say, Hmm, how many fourths make a half? You just take this half down and you follow it with your finger and wherever it matches, you will see that two fourths make one half. Don't believe me, guys? Look, let me use this half that I have here. I'm gonna place it up in front of two fourths. There you go, see? Two fourths make a half. Three sixths make a half. You guys see how we do that? All right, this next purple one are sevenths. Seven sevenths make one whole. Do any sevenths make an exact half? Just think about it. Do any of these sevenths here, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven sevenths, do any of them make an exact half? Well, let's see. Let's follow the line with our finger. Hmm. Nope, not really. It falls right in between one, two, three sevenths and a half of one seventh, right? So not there's no sevenths that make a half. Let's look at eighths. These are eighths. These brown ones are eighths. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we add eight eighths, it makes a very good, yep, eight eighths make a whole. How many eighths make a half, fourth grade? Yeah, very good, four eighths. You guys are following the line, mm-hmm. Four eighths make a half, awesome job. The next one here in gray are ninths. You guys will see these are ninths. And if we line this last little ninth up, it makes one whole, nine ninths make a whole. The next one is a tenth. Okay, so let's see here, one tenth. How many tenths make a half? How many tenths are equivalent to a half, I should say? How many tenths are equivalent to a half? Yeah, five, very good. So if we take our finger down here and we follow that halfway line, we will see it right here matching up and we can count one, two, three, four, five. We know that five tenths make a half. I'm gonna put this strip over it just so that you guys are able to visualize it a little better. And you guys can see that five tenths make one half. Very good. These green ones here are elevenths. So 11 elevenths make one whole. And last but certainly not least, these little darker blue ones here are twelfths, okay? Twelfths. How many twelfths are equivalent to a half? Very good. Yep, six twelfths are equivalent to one half. Very good. So if I take this fraction bar here, place it right under here, we will see and count one, two, three, four, five, six, Six twelfths are equivalent to one half. Awesome job, fourth graders. Let's look at fourths here. Let's pay attention to the model. And I want us to find which fraction here would be equivalent to one fourth. Which fraction here would be equivalent to one fourth? So let's use our finger, drag it down, and tell me if you guys see anything anywhere that could be equivalent to one fourth.
Very good, fourth grade, yes. So if I drag my finger down a fourth and I try and find, oop, right here, two eighths is equivalent to one fourth. Awesome job. If I keep going, keep going, keep going, oop, three twelfths is equivalent to one fourth. Awesome work, fourth grade. So I just wanted you guys to see this so that you are more easily able to visualize fractions through the use of this fraction bar, okay? We're also going to use this in our word problems for today. Okay, everyone. So for today's video, the fractions that I want to focus on are our benchmark fractions. So everyone, please take out a sheet of paper. This is where I want you guys to write with me benchmark fractions. Bench like where we sit on a bench, mark, like the marks you get on your paper, and of course the word fractions, okay? Benchmark fractions. And the benchmark fractions that I want us to focus on today are going to be these. You guys ready? One fourth, one half, three fourths, zero, even though zero is not a fraction, but zero means none, and one, one whole, okay? So these are the benchmark fractions that I want us to focus on. Everyone, please write these down. One fourth, one half, three fourths, zero, and one. Now, you guys can notice here that I have a number line. Please, guys, if you have a little bit of space on your notebook, go ahead and draw out a number line just like this on your sheet of paper. Okay, and remember that at one end of our number line, we're going to put what, what do you think we're going to put here out of all of these? What do you guys think we're going to put here? Yeah, zero. Awesome job. Zero is going to go here. And right here, what do you guys think I'm going to put? Mm-hmm, awesome work, one. Now, where can I put my half? Uh-huh, oh, Miss McCullough, right in the half, very good. So right in the midway point, I know it's not perfect, but try and find somewhere right in the half and we're gonna go ahead and write down our half. Awesome job. And what's half of a half? Remember, let's look at our fraction bar model here. So if we're looking at a half, what's half of a half? What's half of a half? Yeah, a fourth, right? So where do you think we're gonna put this fourth on our number line? Uh-huh, right here, awesome work, right here. One fourth. And so if we have one fourth, where do you guys think three fourths is gonna fall? Yeah, very good, three fourths. Now I have a question. This is one half, it's not a fourth, but how many fourths are equivalent to a half? Yes, two fourths, awesome job. So even though two fourths is not our benchmark fraction, we know that it's the same as a half and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in parentheses right here just to remind myself, say it's okay. I know that two fourths is the same thing as a half. All right, fourth grade, when you guys are done with this, go ahead and show me that you're done by placing your hand flat on the paper like this. Give me a five on the paper. Everybody give me a five on your paper like that. Awesome work. So remember, our benchmark fractions that we're focusing on today is one fourth, one half, three fourths, zero and one. Remember, we just drew them out on the number line. We know that zero is on one end, one is over here, one half is right in the middle, half of a half is a fourth, and then three fourths, of course, goes right here, falls between a half and one. So I want us to go ahead and keep in mind our knowledge of our benchmark fractions, which is zero, one fourth, one half, three-fourths, and one. And I want us to look at these fractions that I wrote here in brown. And I want us to see around how close 
or which benchmark fraction is closest to the fraction in brown. So for example, let's take 5 sixths, okay? 5 sixths is exactly right here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sixths right here, these dark blue ones. These are 5 sixths. Now let's take our knowledge of benchmark fractions. We have a whole, which is 1, okay? We have our fourth, we have our half, and we know that we have our three-fourths here. So see this strip in blue? These are exactly five-sixths. So which benchmark fraction is this closest to, guys? Is this closest to three-fourths? Is it closest to a half? Is it closest to only one-fourth? Or is it closest to a whole? Five-sixths. Yes, very good fourth grade. It's a little closer to a whole than three fourths. Okay, so if I add this fourth fourth in here, which is a whole, we see that it's not exactly three fourths. It's a little closer to a whole than three fourths. Awesome job. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here. So next let's look at three eighths. Three eighths, it's gonna be three of these brown guys right here. One, two, three, these are eighths. One, two, three, three eighths. So let's take our little fraction strip here and let's see, hmm, which one is this closest to? A fourth? Well, I know it's definitely not close to three fourths. It's nowhere near it. It's a little off from a fourth. Definitely not a whole. If it's not three fourths, it's definitely not close to a whole, but it's kind of near a half, right? Yeah, it's kind of near a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's closest to a half. Now let's look at this one. Two fifths, let's use our benchmark fractions here. Two fifths, it's two of these green guys here. So one, two, two fifths. So we're gonna go ahead and slide up and say, hmm, well, two fifths, um, I know it's not really close to a fourth. It's kind of close to a half. It's not a whole, it's not three fourths. Two fifths is more of like what? Yeah, it's a little closer to a half. Very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another half here. And then let's look at one tenth. These here are the tenths. One tenth is closer to a fourth, a half, three fourths, or zero. It's definitely not close to a fourth. It's a very small amount compared to a fourth. See if we take our pen or our finger and just kind of slide that up. It's definitely not a half, definitely not a whole. Of course, it's not three-fourths. I say it's closer to zero on the number line, right? And that's what we're gonna do today in our word problems, guys. We're just gonna look at some fractions and we're gonna use these benchmark fractions here to see which ones these are more reasonable or closer to, okay? All right, fourth grade, so as previously mentioned, we are going to go ahead and do a word problem in relation to our benchmark fractions, okay? Let's remember our word problem strategies as we go through this example right here. Remember that when we read a word problem, how many times are we going to read it? Mm -hmm. Two times, very good. The first time we read it as if it's a story, right? Or just something that we're reading for fun. And then the second time we read it for what? Yeah, to get the important information, very good. After we're done reading it, we're gonna go ahead and do what? Mm-hmm, we're gonna box the question, right? And then we're going to go ahead and highlight the important information in the question or the word problem that we need to use in order to help us solve whatever we need to solve, okay? So if you guys are ready, I'm going to go ahead and read the problem. Read along with me. This is our first run through. So this means that we're just going to read this for once, just at first, just to read it as if we're reading a story. Okay. All right. Fourth grade, follow along with me. Shelby and her brother shared a candy bar. Mmm, that's yummy. Shelby ate four ninths of the candy bar. Her brother ate one eighth of the candy bar. What is a reasonable estimate of the candy bar that Shelby and her brother ate? So what is this word problem about? Without telling me numbers, don't tell me, oh, I think I'm gonna add, just what is it basically about? Yeah, right, so it's basically about a girl and her brother and they shared a candy bar 
and we just kind of want to know how much they ate. That's it, right? So now guys, let's go ahead and do the second run through and really read it to gain and grasp the information. All right, fourth grade, let's do it. Shelby and her brother shared a candy bar. Okay, so I see that they shared it. Hmm. All right, so they, they ate it together. So Shelby ate four ninths of the candy bar. Okay, I can kind of picture four ninths in my mind. And her brother ate one eighth of the candy bar. Okay, I remember the fraction bar, so I know what an eighth looks like. What is a reasonable estimate? Hmm, estimate, I remember that word. Estimate of the candy bar that Shelby and her brother ate. Hmm, all right guys, so remember strategy number one. We are going to go ahead and box in our question, right? We're gonna go ahead and box in our question and our question says, what is a reasonable estimate? Hmm, an estimate of the candy bar that Shelby and her brother ate. So I'm gonna go ahead next and circle or highlight the important information. And so I see that this word estimate is very important. Estimate is important. I see this word and, and is very important. I of course see our numbers here. So I see that Shelby ate four ninths of the candy bar. So Shelby ate four ninths. And then I see that her brother ate one eighth of this candy bar. Wow, so Shelby ate four ninths and her brother ate one eighth of the candy bar. Hmm, so it says, what is a reasonable estimate? I like this word reasonable too. I'm gonna go ahead and circle this word. What is a reasonable estimate of the candy bar that Shelby and her brother ate? So I want us to reflect and go back to think about our fraction bars that I had here. So I went ahead and taped this fraction bar here for us, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do our own fraction bar, but we're only going to use the amount that Shelby, her brother, and our benchmark fractions, okay? So we're only going to do three bars essentially. So everyone do it with me. And right here. And let's divide this big bar or big rectangle into three parts. I'm going to label this one S for Shelby, B for brother, and then we're just gonna have our benchmark fractions down here. So up here we're gonna have Shelby, down here we're gonna have brother, and right here, we're gonna have our benchmark fractions. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and remember our benchmark fractions are 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1 whole. Zero, so we're gonna have zero here, which is nothing. We're gonna have one fourth, one half, which we know is also two fourths, three fourths, and one whole or four fourths. I'm gonna put four fourths here and I'm gonna put in parentheses one so that we know it's one whole. And how much did her brother eat, guys? Somebody read the question and tell me how much did her brother eat? Yeah, he ate one eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and split this into eighths, right? So everyone do it with me. Okay, and we have here one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. And just keep writing that all the way down, guys. Keep writing our eighths down. Okay, one eighth. And it says that her brother ate an entire eighth, just one eighth. So since her brother ate one eighth, we're gonna go ahead and color that eighth in, just like that. That's how much her brother ate. And how much does Shelby eat? Yep, she ate four ninths. So what do you guys think we're gonna do? Yep, 
We're gonna split this into ninths. Awesome job, fourth graders. One. And we have here one ninth, one ninth, and just label these all the way down on your paper, just like this. All right, and it says here that Shelby ate four ninths. So I'm gonna shade four ninths. One, two, three, and four. So that's how much Shelby's brother ate. That's how much Shelby ate. So let's look here. We've got our big benchmark fractions down here. You can go ahead and label these if you want to fourth grade. I'm going to just so that I know what they are. Benchmark fractions. Like I said, I'm going to label them so that I know what these are down here. These are the benchmark fractions. So it says, what is a reasonable estimate of the candy bar that Shelby and her brother ate? So let's look at this picture here together and let's decide. Does it look like Shelby and her brother ate a fourth? Well, it seems like they ate a little bit more than a fourth because I know that four ninths is definitely more than a fourth. One eighth isn't hardly a fourth, but I don't think they ate a fourth. I think they ate a little bit more than that. Let's look at a half. Hmm, it seems like they ate around a half because I know, well, I see that the denominator is nine, so it's ninths. And I know that when the denominator is an odd number, we can't exactly split it right down the middle. But I know that four and five is around half of nine, so it could be a half. Three fourths, hmm, well, Three fourths is definitely just too much. I don't think that Shelby and her brother ate that much. And four fourths and one whole, they definitely didn't eat a whole. So it seems like they ate how much fourth grade? Yeah, very good guys. Shelby and her brother ate around a half. Awesome job. Do you guys see how we did that? We know that four ninths is not exactly a half. But then if we go ahead and let's say we're gonna put that eighth in there, we can see that it's around a half. You see this word reasonable and this word estimate? It doesn't say, hey, what is the exact amount that Shelby and her brother ate? It just says, what is a reasonable estimate? If someone asks us to be reasonable or to give us a reasonable amount or a reasonable number, it's kind of like doing it almost to the point, right? Almost, right? So we know that this is almost a half or just about a half. We know we're not gonna exaggerate and say, oh, she ate a whole and her brother ate a whole together. Of course not. It's not exactly at three fourths either. It's not even touching three fourths. It's around a half and it's way too much. They ate way too much to say that they ate a fourth. So you guys see how we did that? All we did was fraction bars. Okay, so I want you guys to get in the habit of writing your benchmark fractions out like this. And if you have to do a fraction bar pictorial model to help you, you can go ahead and do so. And I promise it'll just make everything a little bit easier for your math. All right, fourth graders, thank you so much for joining today's lesson with me and learning a little bit about how we can apply benchmark fractions to finding sums and differences of other fractions. I'm super proud of you guys for your work so far this semester. You guys are doing great, great things out there. I see your hard work, I notice it, and I appreciate it so much. Guys, remember that next week, we're gonna go ahead and dive a little deeper into fractions, but this time we're going to add and subtract fractions. So my challenge for you this week would be to go ahead, keep using those benchmark fractions, use these fraction bars, draw them out like this, and just go ahead and see which ones are a little closer or more reasonable to the other. That will definitely help us with next week's lesson of adding and subtracting fractions. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Bye, everyone.